Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about sauna type Nexus repository and how to cache things in it. Uh, we are talking about APT and Docker. And let's switch over to my screen here. And here we have a setup no Nexus repository. And I've already done a video about how to install it. It's pretty much just install Java and installing the packages or the, the zip package for Sona type and then start running it. And you can create it as a service in the system and so on. So I've gone through that. And I've also gone through how to store your Java uh, classes in Sona type. But I had a project at home where I wanted to do a lot of work with Docker. So I had a lot of Docker images and sometimes I wanted to clean my hard drive out from all the Docker images and then downloading and building everything again was a hassle. So I said, okay, perhaps I can create something here that is faster to just download them from a repository. And of course I wanted to use Ceph. So there is a lot of moving parts here. And if it actually was something that I could use later on, that I will take in the end of the video. So here we have the setup, we have Bullseye. So here I have a couple of packages for the Bullseye uh, setup security and Debian updates. We also have the Docker Hub here. So here I can download things from Docker Hub and so on. So I have a couple of these set up. But as I said, I wanted to store these in Ceph. So under my blob stores, I have Ceph. And under here, you can set up default AVS resource. We say the bucket name is Nexus. And then we have some credentials here. So an access key and a secret key. No encryption at the moment. And then I go to a particular host. So, and this is also exp uh, extremely important, S3 signer type, because that is what is supported by uh, Ceph. But in order to get that up, up and running, I needed to have an S3 set up in my cluster, my local cluster. And I didn't have that set up. And I also say seen a lot on my GIST about how to set up RGV, that is a couple of questions. People have had problems with connection, getting them into Ceph and so on, and getting it up and running. And I have actually two nodes here, node five and node six are shown in the GUI here. And I can also see the users and the buckets. So that works, but it took a lot of time for me to actually to get it up and running. And the main problem here was that it wanted to connect to a secure link, but it didn't have the correct port and everything. So I tried a bunch of things back and forth. And what I came up with was actually, if we go over to my uh, setup here, is this client setup. So I have the client RGV node five, it's host five. I have a key ring for this Rogers gateway. And then we have this log file here. Uh, and they, this is just logging out all the information. But it's crucial to have the log file because here you can see if anything goes wrong. And what I was first off trying to set up was just an endpoint with a particular port. That didn't work because it said, okay, you need to actually connect to a secure port. So what I did then was setting up the whole command here with the SSL endpoint, an SSL certificate, a private key, didn't work at all, crashed a bunch of times. So what you actually just need is to say, this is the port I want to use. And when you define a port, it stops crashing for that reason, because it actually finds the port. Uh, so this is something that is in the later versions of Quincy, if you don't assign a port, then it will not work because it actually looks for the port. Uh, the endpoint you could probably um, assign as well, but it will not work if port is not um, defined. So this works just fine for me. Another thing in Quincy is when I started up the client, it never actually created the pools, which is also a very strange thing. So what I did was that I went in and created all the pools. 
and it starts just fine, works just fine if all the pools are available. But for a new user that hasn't set it up before, how would they know that they need to set up these seven or eight different pools? Um, so in this case, I think using the Ceph admin to set everything up is much easier for you. So adding all these pools was a bit of a hassle. I have already set it up before, so I know which pools are required and so on, but it wouldn't actually create them by themselves. It just flat wouldn't. So that was another thing that was very annoying. But after I got that set up, I could go in here, see my gateways, set up a user, get the connections there, set up a pool, and then I just needed to configure it in Sonatype and get it up and running. Usually there is a default blob store here that is on a disk, but if you remove all your repositories, you can also remove that one. And then you need to set up the repositories again. Uh, so what I set up here was first off proxies of APT. So it's pretty much saying that for Bullseye security, you could use this URL instead. And I want, want to use the Bullseye security distribution. And the remote storage is on security Debian org uh, Debian security. So this is pretty much copying the parts that you see in your APT source list into uh, your repositories here instead and what I needed to do to get this to work at all after setting this up and saying that I wanted to store it in Ceph and so on was going in to the anonymous um, access and putting this on because adding a certificate and private access to this repository when it's local is too much hassle you could do this but it's a lot more work. So turning this on, of course, anyone on your network could use this server as a proxy, but I, I think that is fine for this uh, particular use case. Uh, and then I also set up a Docker Hub, and here I have the Docker Hub as a proxy, and I set up that I wanted to do uh, anonymous uh, pulls from this, um, and I wanted to use Docker v1 API and the registry should be Docker IO registry one and then use Docker hub and so on. So I, I set it up so I could have Docker hub as packages and another block, another storage was the local store. And this is for everything that I uh, check in and upload and you need to give this an HTTPS host in order to push things to it. Uh, otherwise you could push it to this URL up here, but it doesn't work for me. So setting up a particular port that you push your data to is much easier to say, okay, this port you should push data to uh, for the local access and also enable V1. So we have good um, support here and the Ceph storage. Last but not least, I set up the public repository and this is pretty much a copy. So you have both of these members here, uh, both the hub and the local, and then I set another port for that. Now that I want, when I want to actually push something to this repository, I can go in here and say Docker build and tag it with uh, node seven, which is where this server is. Uh, and then say the port 8083 and slash, in this case, the doc Docker image is TTS base. So if I build that, and I need to set a dot, uh, let's see, let's go into uh, GitHub. Oh, another tab. Let's go to the other tab instead. <laughs> So this tab here, if I want to build it, I can just go like this and it will build it. I have already built this multiple times. And then I, when I try to push this to 883, which is my public repository, it will tell me that it won't do this with a normal license. You need to buy a license. So if you want to push it to your public repository, which is this grouping repository where you both have your local and your hub, you need to have a pro license. And then in this public repository, you can say, 
this local repository is where I want you to push it. But as I haven't paid anything for this yet, I need to push it to the local repository. So then I need to rebuild it. In this case, I said 80, 80, 83, 84 was my local. And then I can start pushing it to 83, 84. But when I want to pull it, I need to pull it from 83, 83. Or I could use 83, 84, of course, as well. But then I will not have access to the uh, public resources at Docker Hub. So you get some benefits by actually buying a license here. But as you see, pushing the data to this repository is not quick. Uh, and that's because I have very, um, not slow, but pretty uh, constrained uh, computers in my Ceph repository. I, I haven't added a bunch of power hungry beasts that could uh, run my Ceph repository. It's more of a long time st storage. Um, so if we go into node 5 here again, we could look into, or we can look into how, what I actually needed to set up to get this to push. So in my etc docker um, directory, there is now a set search uh, dash D. So that is something that was added um, or I added in order to get this to work. And in that directory, I had to add the directories for this host. So I had directories for these hosts. And then in this directory, I downloaded the C, uh, CR cert for this. So I had to have a file called CR cert, which is the certificate for this particular host. And I had to add it for all the different ports that I wanted to use. Uh, for me, a reasonable thing here would be to add it to the Unix uh, search store as a CA and then update that and get it to work that way. Have not gotten that to work. So using this was such a hassle. I could use a, a method to pull an image and run it, but using it in a from command, just saying from this URL in a Docker file will still give me a certificate issue. So I can't do that, which was very annoying. Uh, so the setup for Docker images was not the best one. I didn't like that. Um, when it comes to using the um, APT, so we can look at my source file here, cat uh, sources list. So here we see that I just replaced all these normal things that you download with my own Debian. And I here I said, okay, this repository is trusted. If I didn't do that, you had again the same thing with the it's saying, okay, this is HTTPS has not a valid certificate. It is something that is um, self-signed, so we will not trust it. So I had to set trust yes here, and then I could say my repository will sign main. Uh, I also have Quincy down here, which is something that I usually have in sources.d. Uh, but after I've set this up, I can do an apt update. And it will, uh, I need to do sudo, of course. Uh, so then it will download my repositories from the proxy. And if it's not the latest in the proxy, it will go out and fetch it from the internet instead. And as you see, this is not super quick. And if I do an upgrade, it will work as well, uh, updating packages. But doing this was really slow for me. And it's not really an option for me uh, because my internet access is so much quicker than my local storage access. I think doing it from the internet versus my local cache would be, I believe, 50 times faster or something like that, at least which is ridiculous. <laughs> Why would I do it from my local cache if it's so much quicker to do it from the internet? One reason could be, of course, if you have internet access that goes down, 
if your internet access costs a lot of money, of course, if your download rates are high, then you can have this repository, download it for one server, and then update a bunch of different servers. And of course, if you are in a big hall or something like that and wanted to update hundreds of servers uh, in a rack or in multiple racks, then of course this would be a very good use of uh, resources because you wouldn't need to go out on the internet and fetch, th fetch those packages all the time. So this was what I wanted to cover today. We wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Sona Type Nexus repository, how to set that up as a cache for APT and how to use it for Docker. Currently, it's not something that I'm gonna continue using in my local uh, setup here because it's faster and easier to just build things again. It takes so much longer time for me to download a built uh, seven or eight gigabytes image than to actually build it locally. It's not even close. So this is not something that works for me, but I hope that you learned something today and that you have some kind of usage for this particular software. Uh, did you like this video? Give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. Please give a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions or comments or if you have any use cases that you have been thinking about using here. There is a bunch of different other repositories you could use. So there is so many use cases for a Sonatype Nexus repository, but they, these are two of them that I thought might be, would be useful for me. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next one.